and she made a video three months ago for Harper's Bazaar or Harper's and she made like a 12 minute video of just lies just lying I went from two inches of hair at the reunion of Real Housewives of Atlanta at the top of last year to bob length hair in a matter of six months from this shampoo. It's not possible. It is totally insane. Like, girl, what did you? Why did you lie? Like, you literally could have just told the truth. And yeah, like, this not gonna be no consequences for her. No one's gonna, no one, no one's gonna care. But even myself, you a liar. <laughs> Sometimes it don't make no sense. Does it really Hi, welcome to Maya's world. Okay, everyone, so first, thank you everyone who has subscribed to my YouTube channel. We're now at 35,000 subscribers. That's such an amazing thing. I started YouTube um, in 2016 and it's just one thing that I'm really happy about with having a YouTube is like I have fun like I enjoy the content I'm talking about and I really like that my subscribers have allowed me to like not even allowed me but like supported me with pivoting into many different topics when I first started doing um, YouTube I was actually doing it about my lock journey and I had internalized that my hair was wrong if it was not neat and well kept for most of my life. I would buy all these expensive products for my hair just to look acceptable. And I have now like pivoted to more social issues, more pop culture. I still talk about hair, textures and colorism, all of the isms, anti-blackness, like that's still a part of my channel. But I like that that's like majority of what I do and I was always very nervous to be like, oh my god, if I stop talking about my hair, like will people still be interested in what I have to say? And I'm just really glad that it has, it is where it is. Like I just feel really appreciative that I can talk about things that's genuinely like something I'm passionate about something that I care about, things that are on my mind, and it's always well received. Well, that's not true. I do get, you know what I'm saying, I get some negative comments, but the people who are subscribing, I really appreciate that because I can tell who really enjoys my work and y'all write some of the, the sweetest messages, so I'm very thankful for everyone who subscribed. Also, I realized, I think today or in the next couple days, I forgot the exact date, but I think it's also the fourth, four year anniversary of me having like of me allowing my hair to do what it do, which is called fruit foam locks. So yeah, I have my hair for four years now. So that's like very exciting. Today, we're gonna be having a hair discussion. We're gonna be having a hair discussion about Eva Marcel. We're gonna have a hair discussion about people who are lying. Just lying for free. No, lying for pay, lying for money, okay? Before we get into any of that, we gotta get into the looks. We gotta get into looks because I am looking so cute today. This day, so cute. So let me show you. Okay, can you see? Okay. So starting from the top, no, starting from the face. This is this is the face. Can you see? Okay, yeah. This is the face. This is what we're giving up top. She's giving you a bit of a peach, of a rose, of a nude lip, of a of an ocean inspired. Come down a little bit. Yeah, oh wait, okay, a little bit higher. Can you raise it up a little bit? A little bit more? A little bit more? A little bit more? <laughs> yes, okay, you can see. Can everyone see? You can see my outfit, right? You can see the jeans. You see my niece in the shot. You see the, the jeans is giving. Great, thanks, Abby. Thank you so much. So as you guys can see, I have ripped jeans, which I'm really excited about because right now I'm in Atlanta, which is where I grew up. And the thing that I've learned, because you know, I've lived in different countries, nowhere but the South has good denim. So you, so for me, I like getting secondhand denim, like denim that's in a thrift store. I love it. So I was, I've been thrifting a lot of denim since I've been back. So I just, yeah, anyway. But they're very cute so I'm very very happy about it and it was like affordable I've been just getting yep so I thrift my denim in the south and I can't wait to bring it back to Nigeria because you know what I'm saying I don't know if y'all know this but Nigerians have this the elders they have this really weird hatred of, of random random things like it's like they see it and they're like 
criminal activity. So like de ripped jeans. It's not even sorry. It's not denim. Ripped jeans. Like they just have rips in them. Ripped jeans. Nigerians hate ripped jeans. They hate like older. They hate ripped jeans. So when I have my ripped jeans, and you know I'm all for asserting myself with the things I like. You know, you have rip you hate my ripped jeans and you hate my locks. You have a problem for yourself. That has nothing to do with me. So I'm ready to wear my ripped jeans in the streets. I want, I want someone to try me, okay? So I'm very excited for all the ripped jeans I'm bringing back to Nigeria. And at this time, I am going to be moving back to Nigeria soon, which I'm very, very excited for, about. I'm very, very excited. So that's for me, that's a lot going on in terms of like, you know, movement. I'm someone who's always in transit, always. But yeah, now I'm having a little transitionary time back to my home, which is in Nigeria. If you guys are new to my channel, I grew up in Atlanta, Georgia. Okay, born in London, did not spend any time there, just born there. Completely raised in the US. Um, yeah, and then moved to England, then moved to Germany, then moved to England, then moved back to Atlanta, then moved to Nigeria. No, then moved to England, then moved to Nigeria. Okay, fast forwarding. I've been living in Nigeria now for coming up to a year. It's gonna be coming up to a year. Um, so, yes. That's what will be next on my channel. The next video you'll see, I'll probably be in Nigeria. So if you haven't joined my Patreon, like I create weekly videos for the most part. This week I'm not gonna be posting anything on my Patreon because I'm going back to Nigeria, but typically I post on my Patreon. So if you haven't joined, go ahead and join my Patreon. Ew. Okay, yeah. Today, we're gonna be talking about something that I really am very like, something that really makes me angry, which is lying. I don't like liars, especially unprovoked. I was sitting in bed and a mutual friend of mine called Amber Abundance, who off topic has made an incredible movie that I watched online and it's just so good. I think the movie's called Abundance. I'm gonna like put her information here. She sent me this video and she was like, LMFAO, you will not believe this now. I watched this video, it's a video of Eva Marcel. I don't know if y'all know who Eva Marcel is, but she was one of the winners, I think the first winner, America's Next Top Model. If y'all already, I, I'm sure y'all already know the when you look back at America's Next Top Model, it's just like the balls of problematicness. My mother yelled at this is because she loves me. I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. How dare you learn something from this? That was that TV show. She's one of the winners, and she made a video three months ago for Harper's Bazaar or Harper's, and she made like a 12 minute video of just lies just lying i went from two inches of hair at the reunion of real housewives of atlanta at the top of last year to bob length hair in a matter of six months from this shampoo I don't you lying. Why you and i'm gonna show some of it i'm gonna speak to some of it and we're gonna unpack it together so this is gonna be a read but it's also gonna be an educational moment for both of us right because as much as I love topical things, I don't really feel like, like I like talking about things that's happening, current events. That wasn't originally my plan when I was making YouTube videos, but I do like how there's always a moment to learn and to teach and to explain and to show things. Um, and yeah, and before any of you evil, evil enemies of progress wanna write me on some hateful shit saying oh you're always mad you're canceling i'm not canceling anybody okay i don't have the power to cancel eva pickford i am in my room okay i'm not even i don't have a car i don't have any ability <laughs> to cancel somebody okay but what i am gonna do is when i see bookie shit i'm gonna speak to the bookie shit because i feel like you know i make youtube videos for my younger self my younger self saw a lot of really off the wall things that did not make sense. And I wished I had a community of people to talk about it with so I can be affirmed that I'm not overreacting and that others are seeing the same thing as me. So my YouTube channel is with that exact ideology in mind. I wanna to speak to things that I know is fucked up and I wanna be able to have other people kinda of be on the same page as me. So people who are watching, people who like it, it's usually people who have similar experiences to me. So let's get into it. Eva Marcel did this video for Harper's. I have locks. 
These are not temporary locks. These are not braids. This is not synthetic hair. This is my hair locked. I have my lock anniversary actually coming up in a year. I'm super excited. And in this video, she just, the first thing I wanted to say is like, this, that's not her hair. She, she literally, the first thing she starts off with saying is like, this is my, my real hair. S sweetie, it's, it's not your real hair. It's, it's, extent, it's lock extensions. So that was my first thing that was a, I was like, you had just made a video recently about you having lock extensions. So now why are you saying that's your, your hair? It's not your hair. And we can see that it's wraps. And it's funny because I made a video about like the desire that people have for like, this loose hair with like the curls at the end or whatever and I use a pic picture of Eva because Eva is someone who I've seen have lock extensions or the fake goddess locks or whatever people want but for you to have goddess locks and you know it's fake and then for you to say that it's real and then for you to have a 12 minute video that I know you're getting paid to talk about how you take care of your locks that just speaks to so much it speaks to texturist Priv like textures privilege or like loose curled privilege or whatever word we're gonna use because of the fact that like that's not even your own locks my dear you have had your own locks if they i don't even know if your hair texture can lock like let's be real i don't her hair texture is so loose i don't know if her own actual hair can lock i remember her saying that the reason she got lock extensions is because her hair couldn't lock because she had like a 2c hair texture or like a 3 air hair texture so you've had locks for about three four five months yeah and you're gonna tell us in a 12 minute video how to take care of our hair that people who have had locks for years and years and years and i know why they picked her they picked her because she's a light-skinned person with loose, or a biracial person who's also light-skinned who has loose curls and that will always be seen as more desirable more people will be engaging with her hair but it's just like it just shows me like these companies they have no <laughs> it, it like i don't know sometimes i feel like um i feel really overwhelmed by how famous and how much money like huge companies have but then I just remember how much a lot of them don't have sense. Like, it just shows me, like, they don't have anyone on their team who checks them because who okayed that? Who thought that that was Eva's real hair? To okay her to speak on having locks for her to lie for 12 minutes. Who okayed that on the team? It lets me know the people who was picking her to do that. Okay? So then, she's... The other thing that was also very off to me is she talks about how she had her hair at two inches and it grew to shoulder length or whatever she literally makes it at home it is epic it makes your hair grow so fast i went from two inches of hair at the reunion of real housewives of atlanta at the top of last year to bob length hair in a matter of six months from this shampoo from two inches to like this and this is something that really upsets me not only does it upset me because she's lying but it's something because it gives this fallacy that is already existing and continuously perpetuated that like your hair there's something wrong with you if your hair's not growing and like all you need is products to grow your hair and like if you guys follow my channel you know like one of the things i'm so passionate about is letting people know that there's there's people who will lie to you for money to to get brands and they'll sell you products that they don't use doesn't work on them they don't care about because they want to get rich and so everyone just kind of takes it's like a baton people are running and they just keep passing on the baton and fucking lies right so she's running she's talking about this 15 products that she uses in her hair passes the baton to a small youtuber they're gonna talk about the 15 products they use pass the baton to somebody else because all these people are getting money these companies are paying people to speak on having using their products so there is a financial gain and the thing is, is that if you want to make your money and do and, and, and lie let us let us know say to me i'm gonna lie to you i'm you know if i'm gonna tell you something i'm gonna say guys i don't like it but I'm getting paid money, okay? So this inhaler, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, tell us that you want to buy a yacht. Tell us that you want to buy a car. Why are you lying and you're making it seem authentic? You're making it seem real. You're trying to seem relatable. I don't like that because it's not real. There is no oil that you can use that can take your hair from two inches to the to the length I have now. I mentioned earlier, I've had my, my locks for four years. As someone who has three form locks or just essentially my hair was always like this i've always had hair texture like this i've been trying to break it my whole life the day i just stopped doing stuff to it that's how my hair locked i haven't done anything so that so for someone to say like you know also too when i have three four months i've had my hair for four years i know people who have manicured locks and four years might be like here or something like that three form locks because my hair is very thick as you can see like it's it grows more out than it does down which I'm okay, I'm happy, I like it. But for me to, for someone to say that you can go from two inches to here, if you use an oil, is incredibly dishonest. 
it's and, and you're preying on vulnerable people once again because who doesn't have access as much information to uh, knowledge about their hair black people right people who have very kinky nappy coarse hair those are people who don't have access to finding out readily information about our hair especially because we have people who are actively lying to sell us things about our hair so i i really hate like if you guys know anything about my channel i really hate passionately when people are deceiving others for money just and and, and telling you something as you know because for me i mean hair is spiritual so you're lying on something spiritual to get gains to get cash no then she goes into this like many steps of how she cleans her hair use an array of products i do that then we all must condition our hair right part of my hair don't forget the middle of your hair and they have a one two three four step process tea tree shampoo this is everything next one which is the deep moisturizing shampoo now you're clean but you're not done which kind of gives off this impression that you must do these things or that these things must happen and the whole point of having locks for most people i would say manicured free form semi free form whatever is that it frees you from um feeling as if you need many products to exist i personally am somebody now i don't use any products in my hair um i use water but just use water so like i always say that to, so people can know that there's a certain reality for people who literally don't want to do anything to their hair that's just adding water i know people who have manicured locks they're using shampoos and conditioners they're using products everyone has like a different thing and in the beginning of my locks i was using shampoo and conditioner now for a year and some change i haven't been doing that everybody has their own little thing that they're doing that's helping them you know and so i feel like for her to be pushing so many products like is is trying to shift this narrative that with locks you we can also you kind of need a lot of products for it to exist and like black hair doesn't need that i ripped everything out take the conditioner and i od i go ham turkey and cheese that's why it's not a lot left because i just take it and i squirt and i put it all over my hair and i just zhuzh it and i move it around and i always reference like our ancestors do you think our ancestors were doing a 12-step program to do their hair our ancestors definitely had things that they were using butters and oils right but those are things that you can find in nature for me like my whole the way i kind of get stuff is like if i can see it in nature i will use it that's me so now you're over here saying all these things that you need and implying like that this is you know like you're someone who knows and it's like i find that to be so annoying because i know that people who have locks like who have had locks for years and years and years they're not doing that. So now to just like segment to other things that's just really messed up about her and like what she said is like she's referred to her hair as kinky. My dear kinky wear. Hmm? Kinky wear. Eva Pickford was ca called Portia and Kenya. If y'all watch America, I mean Real Housewives of Atlanta, these are two people on there. I'll show you pictures of them. She called these beautiful girls nappy headed. <laughs> With these little nappy hands this year, I'm telling you. Two, like Kenya, the woman, the uh, I don't know what to call her, like personality or whatever. Her hair is like her own hair texture is actually so loose. That's why I find really interesting to me is that she, Kenya, probably has like a three C hair texture. So when you're calling a, a brown skin skin a brown skin person, when you're calling a brown skin person's hair nappy who has 3C hair, you're calling her nappy because she's black. So you, your language is showing that you don't see yourself like her because she's she's black, she's now nappy. And then Portia also has a looser hair texture as well. And I find that when she was asked about it, she said that she, um, she also has nappy hair. My dear, nappy wet. Where's the naps? It's not even, your hair is not even folding to get like, where is the conflict? It's looking like slip and slide. It's looking like ramen noodles. It's looking like, like, like jump rope. It's, there's no kinky, there's no kink. I don't know, and this is what I mean about like this desire that people have to like want to claim blackness, want to claim nappiness, want to claim kinkiness when um, because it's, it's profitable for them. And this is a perfect example because she got paid from a big company to speak on having locks. 
So that just shows that these people know that it's money. Because back in the day, I swear to, back when she did American Samoa, she was definitely one of them girlies listing out all the things she mixed with. She was definitely doing that back in early 2000s. But now, when we're in the, when we're in the Black Lives Matter phase, trying to get our Black Lives Matter checks, is what a lot of people are trying to do. She's now nappy. She now has kinky hair. She's now calling herself kinky headed, nappy headed. No. And that's colorism. She people I like was doing research about her. People were signing petitions to get her to get her off the show because she's colorist. Like she made a comment about a dark skinned person being like, oh, she's black black. Not our kind of black, but like black. So she's colorist, she's she's texturist. There's, they, she literally called someone not beheaded and this company Harper's decides that this is the person we want to hire and this is what I mean by there is money in this there, there's money in this and that these people there's no consequences for being colorist there's no consequences for being textures she might get annoyed that I made a video she might get annoyed that people are talking about it but no one is lying on her she is the one who lied and we're calling it out and people think that calling out anomalies calling out inconsistencies calling out lies is canceling so what you want me to just sit here and just take it just sit here and allow someone to just lie and me just like live my own life no like because i want to affirm that this is not real for people who are always meant to feel like you know checking in with their realities this is not real she's lying she's lying and she's all of the isms and she has a platform and she will not she will never not have a platform because we will always be more inclined to listen to somebody like her than listen to like somebody like me or listen to somebody darker than me okay because i always want to like reference that too like even though i'm dark skinned there are people who are deep dark skin darker than me okay like so this is what i mean it's just like it's so frustrating because there are so many people who have locks who would love an opportunity to actually know people's real hair care regime but nobody wants to say it because everybody wants to still get sponsorships so the money Oh, uh, secedes honesty the money secedes trying to uplift black people and I just always ask and push for people to have a level level of discernment when we follow anyone especially people who are getting paid getting sponsorships getting um, collaborations with companies that are white even the black ones too I might more like just any company that's paying someone to speak on something always have a little level of discernment to realize that there is they don't have to be honest because they are getting a check from these people and like it does affect how they like communicate and what they talk about and like that's just very real and I think there are some people who probably do collaborations that can be honest but I feel like a lot of people are trying to get up and get ahead in this natural hair game to be able to get things that they want and live a good life off of the money of desperate people who have nappy hair often dark skin black people who have no resources and it's just been happening like that for a while and when I talked about the natural hair community and how these things are very violent and people are gonna say to me oh it's just hair it's not just hair because one of the biggest reasons that a lot of black dark skin people feel insecure about themselves or have thoughts where they're feeling like they want to unalive themselves or anything like that trigger warning for that sorry a lot of times it will come back down to these things of getting made fun of for your hair, of getting made fun of for your complexion, of getting made fun of for your weight, of getting made fun of, you know, it's all these things that people consider very small and these small things are huge and it's not just one time, it's many, many, many times and it builds up so much trauma. So no, I'm not going to have you tell me it's just hair and that I'm overreacting and that we need to just be over it, get over it. As a black non-man, as a black woman, as a black non-binary, as a black person, our hair means so much to us because we are judged by it. If my hair can prevent me from getting a job, then how can you say it's just hair? If my hair can prevent me from feeling loved and desired and feeling like I am a, a worthy of respect, then it's not just hair. You want me to think that it's something small so that you can continue to perpetuate harm on me. And you're getting mad that I'm calling it out. And no, I'm going to keep screaming off the top of my lungs. I lot of stuff because it's really fucked up. And so like I said, I just wanted to kind of speak to it because I'm like girl what did you why did you lie like you literally could have just told the truth and yeah like this not gonna be no consequences for her no one's gonna no one no one's gonna care but even myself you a liar you a liar you're a colorist you're a texturist and it is what it is it is what it is with that being said you know love on hug on show up for dark skin nappy headed kinky headed people and also another thing I want to say is even Marcel called two girls nappy headed. Who even Marcel who has like a ramen noodle hair texture, right? She called girls nappy headed. 
I call my own hair nappy because I know that these same girls who we call it other girls nappy headed, what you think they call it me? What you think they call it me? I'm called nappy headed all the time. I'm called nappy headed all the time. It doesn't matter where I am. People always comment on how nappy my hair is on the continent and not on the continent in Nigeria and in Atlanta. Like, so I call myself that as a safeguard because it's just like I want to point out what I already know. I want to point out the language that has often been used against me. And people get really mad that I refer to my hair like that. And it's like, I think people get more mad at the fact that I reclaim it for myself and they do the actual word because like when I say my hair is nappy, you know exactly black people, you know exactly what I mean. But you don't like me saying it because I feel like people don't want me to think think badly of myself. But I want to unpack why it is bad to think that my hair clumps. Like, what's so bad? Like, I don't find that bad. I don't find that word hurtful for myself. I understand some people don't like it. And that's why I don't be calling. I'm not going to go to a girl, but I love your nappy head. Like, I'm not going to say that. But these are things that I just feel like, yeah. <sighs> And she could say that word, she could call someone nappy, and there's like literally no consequences. Like that's the like that's what's so wild to me that like, there's no consequences for her saying someone is nappy headed. It's wild. But um, y'all, if you made it to the end, I wanna know what is your favorite part of my outfit. I'm gonna go and like I wanna see if I can show y'all again. Let me know. She giving. Let me know. Do you like it? Are y'all liking the, I've been really feeling like the white eyebrows lately. Like, I just feel like it looks really good on me. I like white in general. White on tips, white on dark skin people. It's over, a game changer, a game changer. So yeah, I've been really feeling the white eyebrows. But let me know, what's your favorite part? You like this, you like a necklace, you like the lace top, you like the denim with the holes in it, you like the booty. Is it given that? Let me know. So yeah, um, the next time I'll have a video out, I'll probably be in Nigeria. So I'll speak to y'all on the other side. Bye.